In this video, I'm going to look at slipstreaming the Dell cabinet pack into a Dell Windows XP professional reinstallation DVD using a program called Enlight. Now I'm going to focus on the Optiplex 790 in this video, but the procedure should be more or less identical for the Optiplex 7010. And these two Dells are the last two Dell desktops to run Windows XP. So they're the last units to have XP driver support. So we're going to select them from the drivers and downloads page. And then we need to make sure that Windows XP is selected. And then we want the system management's category. And we want the XP driver cabinet pack. So we'll also need a Dell Windows XP reinstallation CD. So I've got one here. And what I'm going to do is create this folder, WinXP, and copy its contents to it. Okay, so the next thing we'll need to do is install 7-zip. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we're going to right click the cabinet file and extract it to desktop. So these are all the XP drivers for this Optiplex 790. Um, we're going to right click the start button and go to apps and features and turn Windows features on or off. And we want the Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5 because the program we're going to use, Enlight, requires this. So now we can go ahead and install Enlight. So just go for the default options and then select finish. And then if you want to slipstream Windows Media Player 11, what you want to do is install this program. Now you want to change the installation directory to be the Enlight folder. So it has to be the same folder as Enlight. And during, at the end of the installation, you want to run it and just minimize it. Then go ahead and launch Enlight. So select this folder, this WinXP folder, and then it should tell you details. So it's Windows XP Professional and Service Pack 3. Okay, so select Next, and you shouldn't have any previous sessions. I'll just delete mine. So select Next, and in this screen, you can select what operations you want to carry out. I'm going to select all and then select OK. Now we'll get a message about unattended settings and in a Dell disk there will already be some unattended settings because this is used to apply the OEM system lock pre-installation. So in the next screen you'll have the option to slipstream a service pack. Now there is an unofficial service pack for and perhaps it will work if you slipstream it with retail media, but if you try with the Dell OEM installation media, what happens is that it doesn't recognize the Dell OEM system lock pre-installation key, and the installation media actually just doesn't seem to recognize anything, which makes it pretty useless. So if you've got um, Dell Windows XP home reinstallation, CD or a Dell Windows XP Pro reinstallation CD and they don't have Service Pack 3 on them, you're going to want to slipstream Service Pack 3. If they don't have Service Pack 2 on them, you're going to want to slipstream Service Pack 2 and then Service Pack 3. And this works fine with the OEM system lock pre-installation. If you have the Media Center edition you don't want to slipstream service pack 3 because this breaks the media setup of the XP install. 
So to slipstream a service pack, you just select the service pack and then you'd select open. Now I'm going to select cancel because it will break my OEM system lock pre-installation and I'll select next. Now in the next screen, I'm going to insert Windows Media Player 11. Now I think you can also insert Internet Explorer 8 here for Windows XP. However, I don't know if you need to have Internet Explorer 8 as a cabinet file. My installation media already has Internet Explorer 8, so I can't really test it. Okay, select next and now we get to the driver, so select insert and then select multiple folders and then you want to select all and then OK. And then here you want to press Ctrl and A to select all and then select OK. So that should slipstream all the drivers for your model. And the next screen is going to be components. So there'll be a compatibility wizard, so it's advisable to check everything so you don't lose functionality. I'm not actually going to change components. So the next screen will be the unattended. So in the general tab, you've got OEM pre-install enabled and you've got product key. Now this product key is the OEM system locked pre-installation key and you should not change it. If left this way, you won't be asked for a product key during install and the Dell installation media will automatically activate on the Dell system. Okay, so I'm going to change the automatic updates to disabled and in owner and network, I'm going to change the work group to work group and then in regional, I'm going to change everything to English UK. So Basically the setup screens during install will just have the options that you select here and if all the options on the screen are selected um, you just won't see that screen during the install. So I won't see any language or keyboard screens because I've already selected the options. This will lock it to English UK. So select next to get to options and I'm going to leave all this as default and select next to get to tweaks. Now I'm going to change some of the things on the start menu and also the taskbar. So it's mainly just going to be what displays on the start menu and I'll set these all to display as links except I'll remove my network voices because my XP is going to be offline and I'll also reduce the pop-up delay and select 30 items on the start menu and I'm going to remove the annoying XP tour pop-up because I don't really need to see that now and some pop-up balloons you can remove as well so select next and then select yes so it'll go ahead with the slipstream process. So here it's slipstreaming Internet Explorer 11 and it will slipstream all the drivers as well as well as incorporating your configuration. Okay so in the next screen you want to specify the label of your ISO and then you want to select make ISO and just save it somewhere on the desktop and then select make ISO and then Enlight should create your ISO and that's you now finished with Enlight so you've got your ISO and you basically need to burn it to a DVD in order to use it in your Dell now it's possible to make a bootable USB using Rufus but Windows XP isn't really set up to boot from USB so when I did this the XP setup basically has a drive letter for your USB and a drive letter for the partition that you install XP on and then when the setup reboots it swaps the values of these so you're going to need to like manually specify the location of 
20 to 30 files during the setup. So it's a good idea to test your ISO in a virtual machine using VMware. And when using VMware to test your ISO, you're going to need to make the virtual machine without loading the ISO and then change its hardware and then load the ISO. And so once you've done that, you can basically go ahead and install Windows XP. If you load the ISO, it will run through some auto install, which will break your OEM system lock pre-installation. So because it's a Dell ISO, it should say OEM. And because the virtual machine doesn't have Dell hardware, it's not going to activate. So you'll get this warning that you can only use XP for 30 days. Okay, so there's no errors during the install. So what I'm going to do now is just right click the ISO and burn it to a blank DVD. Okay, so that's us successfully burnt this DVD. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the Optiplex 719. We want to clean install Windows XP on. So I'm going to power up and press F2. And in order to install XP on one of these machines, you're going to need to make sure the boot settings is to legacy. And for an Optiplex 7010, you're also going to need to make sure secure boot is off and legacy ROMs are enabled. Okay, so let's have a look at the system configuration now. So we have the serial port at COM1 and SATA operation we have at AHCI. And under drives, we've got SATA 0, SATA 1 and SATA 2. So SATA 0 is my 256 gigabyte Samsung SSD and SATA 1 is my optical drive and SATA 2 has nothing on it. So now that we've got these changes, we're going to exit the BIOS setup and power up the Dell and press F12 to get to the boot menu. And then we're going to need to select CD DVD and then press any key to boot from the CD or DVD. Okay, so the Windows XP setups now going to load a number of drivers that it has incorporated in it and importantly it's going to load all the storage controller drivers we added so it'll need these in order to access the drive in order to install windows on it and in a lot of cases the windows xp setup would be able to kind of partially access the drive and then not find it as it reboots so you would get this error 7b Okay, so we can just delete all the old partitions and then to help to format the partition. So we'll go for the full format. So it'll format the drive and then it'll copy the files across. And then it'll reboot. And this was the stage where Rufus got in quite a model so you would need to specify each file here as being on a different drive okay so now I'm going to input my name so no I put name and organization as blank and computer name as blank in nlight so these are blank during the setup so we can just populate them with what we we want But note how I never got any language options. And that's because this installation media is locked to English United Kingdom now. Okay, so we're going to reboot again. And then we're in the final stages of the setup. So let's just select next. And then not right now and then skip, and then no. 
and then we can input our username and select next and note when we go to the Windows desktop that our graphics driver is already installed so we don't have a rubbish resolution like we would normally have so let's just change that security center notification so we don't get hassled because Windows XP is never going to have automatic updates and I don't have a antivirus on it so I don't want notified about that either so when I click start, note that the start menu is sized to have 30 items on it and when I right click computer and select properties we see that the product ID contains OEM as expected for a Dell OEM license and if we go to hardware and then device manager we see that everything's got a driver so basically we've got all the drivers installed as expected and note when we installed this on the virtual machine we got that nag for that 30 day product activation we don't get any nag on a Dell PC because OEM system locked pre-installation has occurred in the background however we can test product activation simply by powering off the Dell and powering up and pressing F2 to get to the BIOS menu and just changing the date time so if we advance by a year if Windows XP isn't activated then we're going to be locked out and if it is activated it will just continue its normal use and here you go you see it works fine so I'm going to insert USB flash drive which has the unofficial service pack 4 on it and then I'll just restart and go back to normal date so go back to the bias set up and change the date and now I'm back into Windows XP I'm going to install this unofficial service pack 4 So select next and then accept and then next. So the unofficial service pack 4 appears to install fine on the Dell Windows XP OEM installation. However, it doesn't work if it's slipstreamed. It changes the product key if it's slipstreamed. So likely there are some files during the slipstream that think it's retail and therefore the OEM product key gets rejected okay so if we go to start and right click my computer and select properties we can see that this unofficial service pack is now listed so it just says version 2014 and just to check that we don't break product activation we'll proceed by a year again and see that we're not locked out of our system so that's just a video of installing Windows XP on the last Dell systems that support it of course Windows XP is end of life and unsafe to use online and so on which is why I haven't networked this install but XP still may be required for some legacy applications like when I worked at university and basically specialized scientific instruments would only have drivers and software for old versions of Windows and they were basically so old that the company that made the instruments wouldn't support them anymore so you had to go back to the old version of Windows to use the instrument